Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Divinity Lutheran Church. We're here to worship the one true triune God and to be spiritually fed through his means of grace. It's the second Sunday of the season of end time, also known as Last Judgment Sunday. The theme for our service is that we look forward to Judgment Day. And if you're not exactly sure why that's something we would look forward to, we'll definitely cover that in the sermon. God will bless us through word and sacrament today. Let's begin with our opening hymn, The Day of Resurrection. Separate us from your love, 
and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, our Lord, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is taken from Hebrews chapter 9. For Christ did not enter a man-made, handmade, excuse me, sanctuary, a representation of the true sanctuary. Instead, he entered into heaven itself, now to appear before God on our behalf. And he did not enter to offer himself many times as the high priest enters the most holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once and for all at the climax of the ages in order to take away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for people to die only once, and after this comes the judgment, so also Christ was offered only once to take away the sins of many. 
And he will appear a second time without sin to bring salvation to those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Join me in the verse of the day. Alleluia. Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Alleluia. because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and will come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, but those who have practiced evil will rise to be condemned. I can do nothing at all on my own. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our consideration today is the gospel lesson from John chapter 5. It's my hope that by the spring, the pandemic will have settled down enough that we can go out into our neighborhood and knock on doors and try to find people who don't yet trust in Jesus as their Savior. And I hope that many of you will join me. I also know that the idea of doing something like that is intimidating to many, maybe even most of us here. What do you actually say when you knock on someone's door, someone you've never talked to before? How do you, how do you get to the point of talking to them about Jesus without them slamming the door in your face. Well, we will, between now and then, have some training on how to do that so that you feel better equipped. You are better equipped. But let me give you a little, just a little taste of one common method, very common uh, in our circles, um, one I've, I've used probably more often than the other. Once you get some small talk out of the way, you ask the question, if you were to die tonight, are you sure you would have eternal life? And then follow it up with, let me put it this way, if you were to die tonight, and you were to go and stand before God, and he asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? How would you answer? And then depending on how the answer that dictates, you know, what, what you say next. It's a great method because it very quickly moves the conversation into what matters. You know, if we're going to fan out into our neighborhood, knock on doors, interrupt people who are enjoying their family time, take the risk of, you know, having a door slammed in our face, we better have something more important to say than, do you know where our church is? We have worship at 9 o'clock on Sundays and 6 o'clock on Wednesdays. We better have something more important. It's not worth it to knock on doors if we don't have something really important to say. And, and there is no more important question than that, is there? Are you sure that you will have eternal life? How would you answer God if he said, why should I let you into heaven? There is no more important question. Actually, such an important question that it's worthwhile for you to chew on that a little bit. Are you sure? Are you certain that you will have eternal life? Experience has taught me that the odds are pretty good that fair number of you would answer that question with something less than certainty. I've sat at enough deathbeds and asked people a, a version of that question and received an answer that breaks my heart. I want you to be sure. Jesus wants you to be sure. You can be confident and certain. Like, do you understand why the, the theme for this service is that we look forward to Judgment Day? If that seems a strange thing for you to say. We need to, we need to dig into that. Because you can be confident, you can be certain, you can be hopeful about Judgment Day. You should, not just can be, you should be. The key is is to hear the voice of judgment. The voice of judgment is revealed in our lesson to be Jesus. Now, a lot of what Jesus emphasizes here, this was a, this was a hard text to, to write a sermon on uh, because there's so much in here. Jesus, Jesus focuses a lot on emphasizing that that, that unity of the Trinity, the unity of Father and Son. You know, when he talks about it, the Son can do nothing without the Father. 
He's not saying that he, the Son, is less than the Father. He's emphasizing the unity, that they are, they are together. One God, three persons. That's not really the focus of this sermon, though, because there's some other stuff in here. This stuff about the judgment and about being confident and certain. And really, your confidence about Judgment Day really comes all down to that. That the voice of judgment is Jesus. That's your certainty, your comfort, your hope. Jesus emphasizes the unity between he with he and the Father. But yet, in these verses, he claims the role of judge for himself. He is the voice of judgment. He is the judge. Why is that comfort? Why does that give you hope and confidence? Jesus really lays it out for us. He himself, in these verses, calls, refers to himself as both son of man and son of God. Your confidence lies in the fact, first of all, that the judge, the voice of judgment, is the son of God, which means, of course, true God. Why does that give you certainty? Well, number one, the judge actually has real authority, binding, everlasting authority. The ultimate authority is the one who is the judge. That's important. If, if the judge on the last day had something less than absolute authority, the whole thing would be a farce, right? This is not just a human being who is the voice of judgment. He is also God with all of the authority of God. He also has all knowledge. A judge, imagine if in our criminal justice system, we had judges who were omniscient, who knew everything. We would have perfect justice. That would be amazing. Well, that's exactly what we have on that day. A judge who knows everything. A judge who can actually see into people's hearts and know secret thoughts and motivations. A judge who has all authority, all knowledge, and is holy and just. We all know all the stories about corrupt judges and how much damage one corrupt judge can cause. You probably read stories in the news about dozens and dozens of, of convictions that have had to, had to be overturned because it was found out that a judge was corrupt. Not so this judge. He is perfectly holy and perfectly just. He has the perfect conception of good and evil, right and wrong, and what good deserves and what evil deserves. He has no ulterior motives. He's not swayed by any special interest groups. Perfectly holy, perfectly just. That's your judge. So have confidence that the verdict will be perfect. A holy and just verdict. But there's a reason that Jesus is the judge. There's a reason that Jesus being the judge gives you comfort and hope and certainty. And that's because he is also true man. Actually one of us. We talk about a, a jury of your peers. The one judging us is one of us. Now, the comfort here, though, is not a sentiment something somewhere along the lines of, well, so he is one of us. He knows. He knows how hard it is. He'll cut us some slack. He can empathize with us. Jesus certainly does know how difficult life is. He certainly can empathize with us. But it's not really comfort to think, well, Jesus will let some of us go, the better ones, because he knows. He knows how hard life is. No, the comfort in our judge being one of us is that the very one who judges us is the one who gave up his own life for us. 
It's really an amazing concept, isn't it? Uh, the judge, who isn't just authoritative and holy and wise and, and, and full of knowledge, but a judge who loves us enough that he gave himself up for us, that he was willing to die for us. Not scary at all, right? There's no reason at all to be scared of a judge who loves you with a self-sacrificing, perfect, my favorite word, agape love. Hear the voice of judgment. That doesn't just refer to what Jesus is going to say on the last day. It's actually way better than that. Let me read verse 24 to you. Jesus says, Amen, Amen, I tell you. Anyone who hears my word, hear the voice of judgment, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He is not going to come into judgment, but is crossed over from death to life. There's a couple of tenses that you really need to pay attention to there. Number one, has eternal life. You hear his word, you believe, you have, present tense, eternal life. And then he underlines that thought at the end. This person has crossed over from death to life. You already have eternal life. You've already crossed over from death to life. Those two things are not the same thing, okay? Has crossed over. You have crossed over from death to life. Something that happened in the past continues to have effects in your present and future. That is talking about you crossing over from spiritual death into spiritual life. For most of you, it was your baptism. For some of you, it was when you heard the gospel later in life and the Holy Spirit worked that faith in your life and you crossed over. Just like that. You were dragged over, picked up, put on God's shoulders and carried over from death, spiritual death, to spiritual life. You have that right now. And that then leads to eternal life. So, in a sense, you already have eternal life. So, what's to be scared of <laughs> on Judgment Day? Nothing. There's nothing to be scared of. You see, you have already been justified. You have already been declared not guilty of sin. That already happened. It's a fact. Jesus said it is finished. On the cross, all done done deal. So what is judgment? Judgment day is really just Jesus announcing publicly what he already announced publicly. He's already announced publicly in his word that you are not guilty of sin because of him. It's just that on judgment day, there aren't going to be anyone, there isn't going to be anyone who can ignore it. They'll be there they will have to all hear it as Jesus announces you, pronounces you, judges you not guilty. You are a sheep. Come and follow your good shepherd into eternal life. Hear the voice of judgment. He has already called you not guilty. It's already already established. Judgment Day is nothing to fear. Hear the voice of judgment. He calls you not guilty and he will call you out from the grave. I mentioned that experience has taught me that some of you maybe aren't as certain of all of what I've just said as you should be. And that I, I, I've heard that uncertainty from my last church before I was here in, in, in Lake City, Minnesota, uh, the last year I was there, a much bigger church than this. I had, I've actually been long enough now that I've forgotten the exact number, but it was somewhere around 23, 25 funerals the last year I was there. So a funeral every other week. I, I do really, I have a lot of experience visiting people at the end. 
And you might be shocked, some of you might be shocked how many times I've been sitting with, with a person who's been in church their entire life. One of these every Sunday attenders. And, and I ask them, I want to give them, give them the opportunity to, to beautifully confess their faith, but also I want to know if there's a weakness there. What do they need to hear from me? So I will ask some version of that question. Do you know, you know do you know, George, that, that, that you will go to heaven the moment you die? And too many times I've heard, I think so, or I hope so. Now, hope could be interpreted correctly, but in my experience in our culture, when we say hope, usually we mean, well, I want this to happen, but I don't know if it will. 23, 24, 25 funerals in one year. Can't tell you how many times I saw the children, the grandchildren of the deceased who, even though they were raised in the church I was a pastor at, long time ago left the church, left any church, left Christianity behind, and they are just broken. Just broken at the death of their loved one. They see no hope. They feel no comfort. It's, it's a level of grief that's way beyond the grief I see from you when someone passes. That's because they don't. They don't have that certainty that Jesus will call us out of our grave. Now that is true for everyone. Believers, unbelievers on that last day, all will hear the call of his voice. All will come out of the grave. But as Jesus says, some will come to be condemned, and some will rise to live. In this year and a half of illness and death, some of you have experienced more, more death over the last couple years than in a typical two-year period. Could we say, maybe guess, that all of us, in the next five years, someone we love is going to die, right? somewhere around that time period. For some of you, more than that. You are going to face death in the future, perhaps the near future, your own, the death of someone you love, the death of someone from your family here at Divinity. Hear the voice of judgment. He will call you out of the grave, raise you back to life for eternal life, give you a new and glorified body, not, not the body you have now that lets you down in so many different ways, but a body of perfection, a body of glory. And then you spend eternity like that. When does that begin? That all begins on Judgment Day. Don't be afraid. Look forward to that day. Look forward to the end of death, the end of sin, the end of illness, the end of heartache and grief and sorrow and tears, all of it finally, finally done. Judgment. That word shouldn't scare you. That word should thrill you. That word should fill you with certainty and comfort because of who the voice of judgment is. Jesus. True man, true God. Your Lord, your Savior, he's coming again, and he will call. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. Amen. We stand. We join in confessing our common faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, though one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The offering will now be brought forward. We have a couple of intercessory uh, prayers today. Another one for Leanne Stemig. Um, Leanne was waiting to be moved from uh, St. John's Hospital to the University of Minnesota Hospital so she could have her, her next procedure. Uh, that has happened now, uh, and that surgery is scheduled for tomorrow. So that's, uh, that's definitely progress, uh, but uh, obviously we will pray for a successful and safe surgery. Uh, and then we will also pray for Marty Reinemann's mother, uh, Mildred. Uh, Mildred did come down with COVID-19 a month and a half ago, somewhere in there, um, and is uh, suffering from some issues right now that might still be related to COVID. Uh, so we, we pray for, for Mildred. Oh Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body. You chasten and you heal. We pray that you would look with mercy on your servant Mildred in her illness. If it is your will, spare her life and restore her strength. You gave your son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses. Deal compassionately with your servant and bless the medical means employed on her behalf with your healing power. We commend her to your gracious mercy and protection, for you are a faithful and merciful God. And we come to you again uh, on behalf of Leanne Stemig, Lord and Savior. May the assurance of your abiding presence and loving care comfort and sustain her as she faces and undergoes another surgery. Remove all anxiety and fear from her heart and lead her to rest all her confidence in you. Bless the work of the surgeon and give success to the surgery as it pleases you. Be with Leanne as she recovers and fill her with an abiding thankfulness for all your blessings. We ask all these things in your name, Jesus, Then we pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at Divinity, we practice uh, what's known as member uh, communion. Uh, we ask only members of our congregation or other Wells or ELS churches uh, to join us uh, to receive uh, the, the body and blood of Christ. Um, if, if that does not include you, I'm more than happy after church to sit down and talk with you and explain to you why that's our practice. We are very happy that you're here with us today, though. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He protects and preserves his church in every age and gives us confidence to lift up our heads and watch for Jesus with joy. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, we praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The
This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. And take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand.
to William and I, William's head elder, it does feel like we're getting a lot closer to that. A lot of churches have gone back to you know their pre-pandemic practices. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna discuss that on Tuesday. Um, and I mean, I'll just be totally open and honest. I think William and I are both leaning toward that. But I'm telling you to, to give me the opportunity to give me some feedback. Uh, and William too. Talk to either William or I uh, in person, phone, email, if you have some thoughts on that. There are a few different things we could do, like we could, you know, say Wednesday night, we'd still do communion with, the, with these little cups so that if you're not comfortable coming up to the rail, you can come and get communion Wednesday, or maybe um, we, if you let us know, we could bring communion to you, you just stay in your pew, you don't have to come up if that's what you would prefer. There's a or right after church. There's a few possibilities, but it will be helpful for us to know. Are most people comfortable with this? How many is most? <laughs> We've tried to really be sensitive uh, over the last year and a half to try to serve everyone in love, uh, but more information would help us in doing that. So please talk to William, William or me over the next couple days, or even after Tuesday if something occurs to you. All right. Sorry about the long announcements. Have a wonderful day. Please greet those sitting around you. And wait for the ushers. I didn't even know that was you. Yes, I thought that never would happen. I had to look twice. What? The I hadn't seen that on you.
they looked at the attendance again over the last month on Wednesdays. Uh, between 16 and about 10. To be honest, it wouldn't be a dance Yes. I might say let's make use of that Yeah, I totally agree. It's one of the things that are good to do in the middle of the summer. Yeah, I actually. 